Hello, welcome to Stone Magpie. My name is Suzanne and today we're going to be working on The Fairy House by Diamond Art Studio. The artwork is by Moonshape Monday. It's a really bright, vivid diamond painting and I'm so much enjoying working on this one. I will show you the progress so far at the end of the video, but you'll see all of the bright colours around here. And you'll probably see that this area hasn't yet been diamond painted because it is a window and at the moment there is a survey going on on the community tab to help me out on whether I should make the windows and the lamps or the lamps and the windows or just the lamps or just the windows. <laughs> quite a dilemma. So I did ask for the viewer's help in helping me make a decision what to do about those. If you would like to vote, please head over to the community tab and place your vote there. And if you voted already, then thank you very much. Right, the section we are going to work on today, whether we get it completed, is another batter is this beautiful one here with the forget-me-nots and the berries and the leaves. And as you can see, I've already outlined it all in the three tens. Oh, like I say, this is just a joy to work on with all of these really bright, vivid colors. So gorgeous. Okay, so we're going to start with the number five symbol, which is this lime green. Oh, so beautiful. I just love colour, don't you? Get these all into place here. And now what updates do I have for you? I have to say it is really lovely being able to work on my big diamond painting again because I've been working on some snack size ones recently. You may well have seen the completion video that I did for two snack size diamond paintings which I really enjoyed doing for a change. They were both, um, well one was round and one was special shapes and round crystal. so but it does feel good to get back to the fairy house. So I am improving after my fall. <laughs> I am getting there and the bruises are easing. I've just got a, a couple of swollen places on my shins at the front, but apart from that, all is good. Still not into my work jeans because they're tighter than um, my everyday ones, but I don't think it's going to be much longer now, fingers crossed. And I really, really need it to be sorted out by October because I'm going away. I am going away for a week, a week's break. Really, really looking forward to it. And that's because I'm going with a friend. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this today to share with you what's happening because I haven't yet met this friend in person. <laughs> and yes, we're going away together for a week. <laughs> but we have Skyped a lot and it's an amazing story and I think it's just so unusual and very, very special. So, when I started my channel, I really wanted a community space for people to come together and enjoy what I think is a wonderful craft. I just think diamond painting is so amazing. And starting the channel was all about bringing people together, sharing experiences, talking about what we're all working on and just, you know, it's quite or it can be quite an isolating craft because a lot of people don't get it, do they? They don't understand what it is that is so addictive. And I think it either grabs you and won't let go <laughs> or it just isn't for you. So, 
It's a bit like Marmite, isn't it? You either love it or you really don't understand it at all. Now, as I say, when I started the channel, it was an immersive experience and just wanted to open it out to so many people and share the experience and any knowledge that you may have to make things a bit easier. Honestly, I think it is such an easy craft to pick up and just run with that, yes, you might be able to add little bits of extra expertise on now and again, but you can just work basically with the kits that are provided and just make amazing pictures right from the off. And then the experience comes with perhaps how you place your diamonds or what sort of kits you work on, whether you change them to suit your own um, creative ideas or, you know, so really it's a simple craft to just pick up and get going with. Now, by starting my channel, very, very, very early on, I had some regular viewers and I very, very much appreciate, if you're still here from the very beginning, thank you so much. You know I appreciate you so much as I appreciate everybody that joins in the channel since then too. It's honestly, it gives me such joy to have you with me. And I don't say that lightly, I truly mean it. And one of those people that really supported the channel at the beginning is Anthea. Now Anthea and I have created a really lovely friendship through the channel that then we've been um, communicating via Skype because Anthea is in Australia. <laughs> so sometimes the time difference can be quite challenging. Poor Anthea tends to get up extremely early on a morning to be able to chat on Skype with me. And um, it, it is appreciated. And we've just got a really lovely friendship. We talk for hours and we never seem to run out of things to say to each other. And Anthea's knowledge, she's a very, very clever lady and so knowledgeable and well-read, really does put me to shame. <laughs> so I just enjoy hearing everything that she's got to share with me. And as I say, I've learned so much about all sorts of different topics through Anthea. And Anthea was always planning to come over to the UK before the pandemic hit and put her plans into, you know, scuppered the plans a little bit. Me being a little bit woo-woo and believing in the universe and things happen for a reason and, you know, nothing happens by coincidence, etc., I really do firmly believe that Anthea was not supposed to come over here until we connected. <laughs> and I don't know if you know a little bit of my backstory is that I started diamond painting because my son needed something to take his mind off, a little bit of anxiety during the pandemic. And we were searching, we didn't know anything at all about diamond painting. And we were searching for an activity for him to keep his mind off um, what was going on and his university course and things like that, because he was living back at home um, while still studying because they couldn't go back onto campus. And it was all very, you know, it was an uncertain time for everybody, wasn't it? And during our search for activities for him, we came across diamond painting. And that's when I decided that it was such a special craft to do, I wanted to share it. And hence, Stone Magpie was born. And through Stone Magpie, I got this lovely friendship. Now, had Anthea come over before COVID, Stone Magpie wasn't a thing then. I had no idea about diamond painting and it just would never have happened that we're able to meet up. 
So that's why I think Anthea's trip was put on hold until, you know, it came to a time when we could come together. <laughs> and that time is going to be very, very soon because Anthea is traveling to the UK and she's going to be doing lots of activities before she gets to my neck of the woods, as it were. She's got a tour around Scotland to start off with, which I'm very jealous about. It's going to be an amazing trip. And um, I'm looking forward to having pictures sent from her throughout her tour. She's also then going to go to the Lake District. She's going to be doing things, all sorts of things, amazing things. She's going to go and see the red squirrels in Cumbria. She's going to do a wolf walk. Um, oh, all sorts of plans. I think she's going to walk some of Adrian's wall and perhaps do a climb up one of the um, peaks. So I expect her to be quite exhausted by the time she gets to me <laughs> here in Yorkshire. Uh, so, yeah, she's going to come and stay in a local town close by to me. She's booked a hotel there and we will meet there for the first time. It's going to be amazing. And then we're going to spend a bit of time. I'll still be at work during the day. Um, so she'll be able to explore the local area. Honestly, the research that she's done into my local area really has put me to shame because she knows a lot more about what goes on around here than I do now. <laughs> in fact, she was the one to tell me that we have polar bears in Yorkshire. And I was like, no way. And she said, yes. And we are going to go one day to the Yorkshire Wildlife Park and meet the polar bears. How amazing is that? One of Anthea's favourite animals is a polar bear. And so she was saying that she definitely has to do it as a must do. And to be able to have the polar bear experience, you had to buy two tickets. So she said she's gonna do it anyway, and she'd really like to, me to go along too and share that with her. So bless her, she has bought the tickets and I'm so thankful. So thank you, Anthea. And yeah, we're gonna go and feed polar bears in Yorkshire. <laughs> Who would have thought? I had no idea that polar bears were living so close by. <laughs> Oh dear. Um, yeah, and so she's been asking me questions about the local area and I've been a little bit like, um, okay, not sure, having to look things up, you know, and <laughs> finding out about where I live really. And I think that's true of a lot of places. When you live there, you know, you don't really know of the touristy attractions or really what's going on a lot in the town where you live. So there may be exhibitions and all sorts going on that I have no idea. Yet if I was traveling somewhere to visit, hence like Whitby, you sort of research what you might want to do while you're there. So I've been well educated by Anthea, what is around me? <laughs> and places that she would like to visit. Now, as I say, she comes over here on a Friday and she's going to stay in a local hotel. So we'll be able to spend that weekend doing day trips. I am going to um, show her the Bumble Walk. If, if you've watched for a while, you'll have seen parts of the Bumble Walk which is a local walk around my neighborhood. And it takes in a little bit of an area where there is a tree and it's got bumblebees nesting within the tree. And it always makes me smile because it does feel like Winnie the Pooh going there with the bees buzzing around the tree. And I've talked about it in a video quite a long time ago and showed the tree on camera. So Anthea and I are going to do that walk with Monty around. 
So she will see that. She'll see the, the little Yorkshire styles that have a little um, dog gate in them. So next to the style, there is a contraption where you lift it up and the dog can run underneath and through so that they don't have to try and climb over the style. It's really quaint and lovely. So I'll show her all of that. And we'll be doing the lovely drive to work. <laughs> so she will see what I mean about my favorite road. And I'll point out all sorts of points of interest along the road. And hopefully the pheasants, it might be a bit early, but hopefully she might see some of the pheasants that sit on the brick wall there. That would be fun if they were out. And um, we'll be going to Mama Magpies. Going and so Anthea could hopefully sit in the garden there and have some cake and cup of, well, Anthea doesn't drink tea. I don't know, I don't know how she became a friend of mine. <laughs> But no, Anthea doesn't like tea, whereas I love tea. So Anthea will probably have coffee and cake and I will have my Yorkshire tea and cake. Um, so yeah, we'll, we're just going to visit lots of places of interest and show the local area and things like that for that week. And then the week after, we are going to go to Whitby. We, are, we have booked a holiday cottage and we're going to spend the week around Whitby and the local areas around there. So I am so excited about this holiday, meeting somebody I've never officially met before. We have talked a lot on Skype, like I say, but we've never actually been face to face. And... Honestly, it's so far out of my comfort zone because, um, I don't know, I, I just, I have never made arrangements to go on holiday with somebody I've never met before. And I just think, I, I'm just amazed by it. And I, there's just something about our friendship that is very, very special. And the first time that we Skyped, it was at a time where I think I talked about Keanu Reeves quite a lot. <laughs> I think I have been a little bit less vocal about Keanu, <laughs> who I still haven't met. You never know though, in life, you just don't know who you're going to meet, and I think I've just proved that. Um, but yeah, I did talk about Keanu quite a lot because I do think, you know, one day I am destined to meet him, I'm sure. <laughs> and of course, he's just going to fall at my feet and plead forever love. <laughs> um, yeah, so the first time that I was Skyping with Anthea, when, when we got the connection up and going, she had a Keanu Reeves mask on. <laughs> It was so funny and just hit the whole, my whole sense of humour she just gets. Um, and I'll never forget that moment. It was hilarious. So funny. Oh, dear me. And um, yeah, we just, I think we just connected from that point on. She then did take her mask off, of course. You know, I, I wasn't talking to Keanu for very long. <laughs> Um, but during that, I don't know if it was the first conversation or the second one. I have a feeling it might have even been the first conversation we ever had. And I mentioned that I used to do a lot of cross stitch years ago. And that I had been working on a dragon wrapped around a castle. And we were talking about the threads and the blends because with this particular picture you had to use one strand of one colour and one strand of another colour and it blended. It was absolutely beautiful and I mentioned this to Anthea and she sort of looked at me and she said just wait a minute and she went off and she came back and she said do you mean this one and she is working on the exact picture that I finished 
when I first met Nick. And so I know what year it was, because I know what year I met my husband. It was 19, oh, this is how long ago. <laughs> this is how long ago. <laughs> I'm gonna give how long I've been in married in a relationship. But anyway, we met in 1993. So I know that I was working on this um, cross stitch around 1994 and Anthea started hers at the, in the same year that I started mine. But I finished mine, Anthea, so come on now, girl, catch up. <laughs> yeah, so we had been working on the same cross stitch at the same time in the same year. I just think it, that just floored me. It was incredible. And we just have so much in common. And yet we live on the other side of the world to each other. So communicating, as I say, can be quite tricky. Um, but we're making it work. And I just can't wait to be face to face. That first moment we meet is just going to be amazing. So... And that's going to be happening very, very soon. And we are planning to hopefully do at least one video together. We're definitely going to be doing a whip and chat together from Whitby. That's already penciled in to the diary to do. Whether we do any elsewhere, we'll have to see because um, it depends on what we do and where we go and whether we feel it's relevant. But hopefully we might get, we might get some um, other little clips in now and again. Can't wait to take her to the Lucky Duck shop. Oh, can't wait. I'm going to be doing all of those joyous things. Isn't that amazing to think you start a channel and you get this incredible connection with somebody who lives at the other side of the world. And I do think it's um, so amazing that we all connect through the internet. Uh, it's, it blows my mind, it really does. And so do let me know if you have had a similar experience and have met really good friends through YouTube or one of your social media, whether you have met somebody through Facebook groups or Instagram. I'd really love to know, because I just think it just makes the world a smaller place, all of this connection together. It's a wonderful thing. And I really do hope that you have got your community that you can connect with through diamond painting. Oh. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Because like I say, diamond painting can be quite solitary. We're sat in our own homes, in our own space, doing what we love to do. And being able to share that with somebody who is also of a like mind is so special. Okay. Right. I thought there would be more of those because it was sort of a background colour, but no. Now, I used to work, I don't know if you remember uh, a long time ago, where I would go row by row and take the next colour here and then do those, next colour here and do those. I feel like I've really changed my diamond painting since I did that, because I now look for the one that stands out to me the most and do that and then move to the next one in the same way, rather than do the next colour in the row. Now, I think in that way, my diamond painting has really evolved. I wonder if it's something to do with the outlines because they're more sectioned off into the outlined area, or whether it's because I started doing that with the Josephine Wall um, diamond paintings from Diamond Painting Deutschland, where they come with 
hundreds of colours and so you're forever changing a colour and that's when I think I started doing the row by row technique you know the, the next symbol in the row going vertical and uh, maybe it's because now I haven't worked on those many colours be interesting if I do get another diamond painting with hundreds of colours in, whether I revert back to that technique or whether I continue looking for the symbols that shout to me from the canvas. Hmm. So has your diamond painting evolved at all or do you still carry on exactly how you started? Did you multiplace, for example, or did you evolve into multiplacing and now you wouldn't be able to go back to always single placing, things like that. I don't think I could now go back to just purely single placing. I really enjoy multi-placing. And I don't think that's necessarily because I want to be faster. I just like the change of putting one down and then five and then three. You know, I, I quite like the the change of style in it. Oh, I can see a little anchor I missed just there. Pop that one in. Right, I think I'm going to go to the zeros next. Or O, I should say. Ooh, which are the ABs? Get these ABs into the blue forget-me-nots. <gasps> what a bright blue. Now I am using some blue wax for the ABs. So I'll change pens. Back to the four placer, which is my favorite size in the plastic tips. Here. I just think they're so easy to use at this size. This metal tip is a five placer. So these two tips are my favorite. Metal placer five, plastic four. Even with my five placer though, I still sometimes only pick up two or three. Um, doesn't always have to be the, the five. Like I'm picking up two here with my four placer because I only need two there. And I changed to the blue wax while doing the ABs because the putty seems to not want to let go of them. It doesn't take the coating off, but it doesn't like to put them down. <laughs> wants to cling on. I think this blue wax is a little bit dry. So when the blue wax dries, it goes a little bit crumbly but I think we'll get this area done with it before I need to change. These twinkles are so pretty. And I've got a claw, what I call the claw end, on the end of the diamond pen as well, which I actually really like. I think um, I might have to look into whether I should get a claw for this diamond pen as well. This is my favorite diamond pen because of the dinky size of it, I think. I do have others from Crafted Makes, which are a bit bigger, and I do love the design of them. But I always tend to err towards this one, my pencils. <laughs> yeah, so 
I haven't really talked a lot about my fall and that's because, you know, it's happened, it's been and gone, it's done and, you know, I was very, very lucky. I only got some bruising and as I say, I'm recovering well from that now. Um, but it did give us pause for thought about our lifestyle. Um, basically, I blacked out at work and fell down the staircase and we were sort of wondering why I had blacked out, you know, what was the reason behind it? And we will never really know the true reason, but we wondered whether I was just a bit stressed. And um, it made us, like I say, rethink our lifestyle a little bit. And we have considered whether we should sell the house and move and just create a few more options for us because we both work full time. I've got my YouTube channel, which you know I do want to continue. I don't want to have to give it up through time. And um, my husband has, well, he plays in, he, he has a few different bands. So he's out late at night as well. And holding down full time jobs and doing all of that, it just sometimes gets a little bit stressful. We also live in a house that, you know, we work to pay for the house, you know, as does everybody. We all have bills to pay and things. Um, and we are in a fortunate position where if we sold the house, we it would, op it would offer other options to us. So we've decided to put the house on the market and see what happens. I am a big believer in if things are meant to happen, they will. So we've done this with, well, my thought was it's going to be a win-win situation because the market isn't, it's a bit strange, isn't it? With the cost of living and interest rates going up and all of that sort of thing. Um, so if the house sells, then to me, it must be that we need to move on and create other options for ourselves. And if it doesn't sell, then I still love my house. I still love where I live. So it wouldn't, you know, it, may, it means that it's not meant to be. And we are supposed to carry on as we are and learn other lessons in how to perhaps make life a little bit easier for ourselves. So, yeah, that's what we've decided to do. <laughs> I suppose it can be a little bit counterintuitive in the fact that we're trying to reduce any stress levels and selling a house is one of the most stressful things you can possibly do. <laughs> but the intention is there and we're basically letting go and opening up to what will be, will be. <laughs> So it does make you look at your the way that you live again now. And when you're opening your house for other people to come and have a look around, yeah, it's like, oh, maybe I am a bit of a clutter. You know, every cupboard seems to be full. I've got diamond paintings everywhere. <laughs> I really need to have a little bit of a sort out and perhaps organise those a bit better. You know, it did really open my eyes up into just how many different areas. <laughs> I've got little mini stashes here, there and everywhere. So as I was getting the house ready for the photographs, I've missed some of those O's here. Um, yeah, I, have, I was, I've discovered I have diamond paintings under the spare bed. I've got diamond paintings in a dresser. I've got diamond paintings in a drawer <laughs> and I've got diamond paintings in a storage area where they should be upstairs. So yeah, all over the place, these little mini stashes and I didn't count them, I have to say. <laughs> I didn't go to far, so far as to think, all right, I'll have a little count up because I don't know, maybe I'm Maybe I don't want to know exactly how many diamond paintings I have and haven't started. Budget as well as more considered. And um, I did actually find a diamond art club painting 
that I haven't yet unboxed. And yeah, I will be doing that one at some point now that I have rediscovered it. I think what happened was I ordered it with a kit that I wanted um, to unbox straight away, but I didn't want to unbox that one. So I stored it and forgot about it. That is so bad, isn't it? It's so terrible, but it was a happy surprise to find it again. <laughs> <laughs> so I will be unboxing that one at some point oh dear me and I did find some that I bought a long time ago when I very first started budget diamond paintings and I remember the idea that I had for them and they're still wrapped up and never been done so yeah I do have more than I thought I did. Ooh. But sometimes that's what moving house is for, isn't it? <laughs> to sort out all of the stuff that you gathered and um, have a good clear out or to organize yourselves into making things a bit tidier, let's put it that way. So yeah, we'll be starting to do that because uh, we have a garage that is absolutely full and it's full of things, boxes of um, bits and bobs. I've got vases, I've got photo frames, I've got books, all sorts of things that we actually boxed up the last time we moved. We put them in the garage and we've never looked at them again. It's so... Incredible, isn't it, that we gather all of this stuff around us and then when it's in boxes, we never look at it. So we obviously don't need it. I don't know why I've kept them for years. Um, I think it's because I'm on, I think it's because I'm a crafter. So I keep things thinking one day I might need this and if I throw it out, I am bound to need it. <laughs> And I found that when I was card making, I would keep little bows, little bits of ribbon, little bits of string, buttons, all sorts of little bits and bobs. And I do have a box in the garage purely for my old crafting. So buttons and ribbons and all sorts are in there too. <laughs> oh dear me. So, yeah, I've promised myself I need a really good sort out. One weekend, maybe next weekend, I'm going to get into the garage and I'll have, I'll set myself a goal, maybe to clear two boxes, two boxes completely done and cleared out. And I think that's the way to approach it because it can be quite overwhelming to see all of a full garage, full of boxes and furniture and all sorts of things. And I think it's because we moved from a different sort of style house to this one and it just didn't seem to fit. Our old furniture didn't really seem to go in this house. So there's things like little wardrobes and blanket boxes and things in there. <laughs> Honestly. Uh. So yeah, time to have a sort out. So even if we don't end up moving, it'll be a positive thing to declutter. And our son Ben has now moved out. He does ping home now and again for a, a few a weekend or something like that, or a few days at a time. But really, we don't need all his old toys and bric-a-brac so I think next time he's home as well he's in for a bit of a shock because he's going to have a job to do to clear out his wardrobes take whatever he wants with him and um, yeah get it all sorted out all his old wardrobe that I am sure there's clothes in there that he will no longer fit <laughs> And it's time to pass those on to other people who might be able to use it. So 
take it to the charity shop and let somebody else have good use of things. I think it's because everything's hidden away. I think if it was out on the worktop, then it would annoy me so much that I would have got rid of it. But because it's nicely hidden in the garage, it's out of sight, out of mind, isn't it? And doesn't annoy me, so it stayed. was rather embarrassing though when the house agent came round and um, asked to look in the garage. I was like, oh, okay, brace yourself. <laughs> there we are. Oh, so pretty. I This diamond painting is so joyous with all of the details in this and all of the different colourways as well. Oh, just beautiful. Those twinkly ABs. <gasps> Lovely. Right, I'm going to do number eight next. So, got a few friends in here, but I'm, I'm not bothering to sort them out. They can just stay in the tray go back in the box and at the end they will be sorted once I put the spares into my storage, my spare storage. They will then be taken out at that point. So it doesn't really bother me about having different colours in the tray. I think the only time it would is if I was doing a really big area of colour blocking then I would probably remove the odd ones so that I was able to pick up enough diamonds at a time. Might need some more of these ones actually. Take these out. We'll see, we'll see how we get on. I might be able to finish this little section of number eights. I cannot believe it is September already. This year has just flown, hasn't it? I can't believe it. I recently unboxed the Libra diamond painting by Dakota Datewiler and oh my goodness, what a diamond painting that is. And I was thinking, wow, it's nearly my birthday. It's just astonishing. It doesn't seem five minutes since it was my last one. Does it count? <laughs> Do I have to go up a year when I feel like it's only been a month? <laughs> that, surely that's not fair <laughs> to add an extra year on. Hmm. Hmm, what's that symbol there? Oh, I've missed an M. I'll quickly put that right. With my claw straight into the pot and in. So I'm going to do these other greys next, which are the little symbols with four squares in a sort of a circle shape. So I'm just wondering if I've got any funny stories to tell because I haven't really been going to many places, just back at work, taking things steady there, so not really going out and about much. Um, yeah, it's been quite a quiet period for me, really. I tell you what I have started doing now, and I am, 
I think I've got a really di addictive personality, you know. I think I've realised through talking to you guys how I, I do get addicted to things. <laughs> so lucky, luckily, I don't, um, you know, try many recreational hobbies, shall we put it that way. Um, but <laughs> I've started watching Desperate Housewives for the first time. And I know it's about 20 years old, isn't it? But I'm really enjoying it. It's really light-hearted and really quite fun. <laughs> um, so it was Louise that got me onto this. She was, because she started watching it, but she's now on season five. And, I, and she was like, have you ever watched it? I was like, no, I think it just passed me by. And I don't know why, because, um, oh, well, maybe I was out and about doing, you know, living life really <laughs> um, at the time, but it's so much fun. So I'm still getting towards the end of season one. Um, so Louise can't really talk to me about what's happening, what she's watching. And when I tell her where I'm up to, she's sort of forgotten, feels like ages ago to her. Yeah, but yeah, really enjoying it. It's great when we find things that have been out there for years and then we discover them for ourselves. So, yeah. So if you've watched Desperate Housewives, let me know. Was it years ago when it was current? <laughs> I'm so late to the party. But before that, I didn't really, I don't really watch a lot of television. Um, when I'm diamond painting, I'm either on YouTube or I'm listening to the radio. And on an evening, we sometimes watch um, the crafty type programs. We like those, Pottery Throwdown, um, The Sewing Bee. Um, what else do we like to watch? Oh, Bake Off, <gasps> yeah to watch a bit of Bake Off and those sorts of programmes, really light-hearted and fun, we like to watch. But apart from those sorts of things, I don't really watch a lot of television. Sometimes I'm forced into watching the sport. <laughs> Grand Prix or Tour de France or whatever my husband's watching. Um, so yeah, I'm enjoying watching my own little bit of guilty pleasure while well, my husband's out because no he I did I did try him with it over one tea time I was like come on let's see what you think about Desperate Housewives and um, I think he sort of suffered it for one tea time and then said you know I think I've got something to do in the shed <laughs> so yeah he wasn't that impressed <laughs> which suited me fine because I got to watch another couple of episodes that night <laughs> nearly forgot these two here right okay Mm, what next? Are the red berries shouting to you? Are you saying, come on, do the red berries? I think what I'll do, because I don't have loads and loads of news for you, I think I'll do the red berries and then we'll stop there and I'll show you the full diamond painting, what's been done so far. Need some more of these though. The you get all the baggies now you see i could have done this diamond painting from the baggies i think i don't really know why i didn't do that anyway it's fine but i do quite like working out of baggies you know anyway topped it up and off we go again
I think it depends on how many bags there are. Um, but I could have definitely done this one from the baggies because we have, how many colours? 50, so that would have been doable. Hmm. Maybe I wanted to talk to you all about how amazing the colours were because it is an amazing colour kit, this one. You know, going back to the Libra diamond painting that I touched on a little bit earlier, there is an unboxing, by the way, an unboxing video for that one, if you would like to see it. Um, I will pop it in the eye for you. Uh, but going back to sometimes things are meant to happen. <laughs> I'd seen the artwork on my Facebook feed before it was even a diamond painting. And um, I love the artwork on it. It is just so incredible. And I won't talk about all of the symbolism now because it is in the unboxing video. Um, but the whole meant to be thing is, you know, I'm trying not to buy really expensive diamond paintings all the time now. I'm trying to be a little bit more careful on it. I've got lots of things in my stash, as I've mentioned, ready to work on. And budget diamond paintings are fine because they're fun and quick to do. And so I will still probably get those. But I knew, knew, knew that when Libra was going to be released by Diamond Art Club, that I would have to, just have to get it. It was on an absolute must buy. And so my mum, bless her, had given me a little bit of money and said, buy whatever you want with it. I'm seeing it as an early birthday present. And when she did that, it was only about a week later that I got an email, I think everybody on the Diamond Art Club um, email list will have got this, a similar email saying that they were doing a discount code or it was like a treat and you had to go and see what particular treat you were given by following the email link. And I did that and got 25% off. And I thought, gosh, that's, that's a nice amount of discount. I had a little look around on the site, but I knew that I didn't really want to spend my mum's gift money on something that I didn't really, 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 really have to have want. So I thought, no, nope, the time's not right. So even if I get 25% off, I'll wait. And only that very weekend, the diamond painting, the Libra diamond painting was released. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw it as the, um, you know, when they the post the releases on Facebook. Oh, I, I was just absolutely over the moon. And then I went on to the the email link and I thought I think it's going to expire before the diamond painting is released <laughs> I thought I've missed my chance but I've absolutely got to have this diamond painting so I will get it anyway and I am in um, the early release bracket for the diamond painting so as soon as I got the email through to say that I could go and have the early bird um, release time, off I went immediately, popped it in the basket and my discount code was still valid. I couldn't believe my look, honestly, so, so lucky. So I managed to get, I do usually have to buy two diamond paintings at a time to get the free shipping. So 
I did buy two and so I've got another one to unbox. So if you're keeping count, <laughs> that's two unboxings I've not done from Diamond Dart Club that I've got ready to do. Um, yeah, so popped the two in my basket, used my discount code, could not believe it. So lucky and I just think it's meant to be Mama Magpie giving me an early birthday gift being able to buy the Libra diamond painting at a discount, incredible, just meant to be. So thank you universe, thank you Mama Magpie. I'm truly thrilled. So yeah, I need to um, get going on that one, don't I? Can't wait to start the Libra diamond painting and can't believe it's nearly Libra season. Wow, happy birthday to all fellow Librans out there because um, it's coming round pretty quick. So I'm just wondering now if I'm a seasonal diamond painter. You know, I do like to diamond paint um, paintings in season, I think. I don't think I'd ever be able to do a Christmas diamond painting any other month but December. Um, are you like that or, or could you do any picture year round? Doesn't really matter. I need to find some more of these. Um, could you do a Christmas diamond painting in June? I don't know. I, I think um, it's good to get prepared. Gosh, if you can, then it means that your diamond paintings will actually be ready to display when it's Christmas, which is always lovely, whereas mine are sort of being worked on, then Christmas is over <laughs> and I have to display it the year after. <laughs> so, yeah. I do still have a Christmas kit that I started working on and I don't it was it definitely wasn't last year so it, perhaps it was the year before and I haven't done much of it and it was from Spell Queen I think and I haven't done one of their diamond paintings for ages so yeah that's another one tucked away oh dear this is like confessional here today <laughs> It's not even in my logbook, that one, because my logbook, I think, I am in two minds about my logbook. I don't know whether to update it or whether just to leave it and do logging from when I started the logbook rather than a complete log of everything. I don't know. Depends what happens when I start sorting it all out. So, yeah, we'll have to see on that one. It would be, I suppose, good to have it all in one logbook. Oh, I don't know. It all takes time, doesn't it? And all of that time could be actually diamond painting and getting Christmas pictures finished in Christmas time. <laughs> right, these are the berries. Oh no, how could I miss that bit there? That big chunk. Nearly, nearly missed it out. But so sweet, aren't they, these berries? It's like crystallised with a sugar coating on, having these ABs on. You know when you get the frosting crystallised berries? Oh, yum. So just these two to place. There we go. All oh, those little twinkles. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Right, I will show you what has gone be completed on this one so far because I am going to continue working on it. I'll show you how much le is left to do. As I say, please do go to the community tab to place your vote on what to do about the windows. And hopefully I will get to a point where I'll be nearly finished it to see the results of that to finish the lamps and the window areas. 
Okay, here we are. I can't quite get it all on, so I will push the canvas up in a little while, but this is what has been completed so far. Just look how bright and joyful this is and all of the blending in the petals and leaves. It's just lovely, isn't it? Here we go with what we have just been working on, this area here with that lovely sunflower in the corner with all of those oranges in the leaves as well. And this is what I've got left. So I've got the rest of this row to complete, the row underneath and then a short row, which I did put release papers on because the cover is so crinkly, I didn't want it to be making a noise whilst I was filming. So for the first time I've actually done um, an extra row of release papers and there we have it so not much left to do at all I will be continuing to diamond paint across I have a feeling I'm heading into the little snail area there he's got his head <laughs> the door and the paving there oh that's going to be cute so I will continue please do keep voting in the survey so that I know what I'm going to be doing with the windows and the lamps and I will join you again another time. Keep sparkling everybody and enjoy your own diamond painting. Take care.